Here is the second part, the Shehnai of Bismillah Khan, of the chapter, The Sound of Music, from the book Beehive, Class 9. I have tried my best in making notes so that you can get the points clear. And it's important for you all to concentrate so that it would help you in scoring good marks. So here comes the first topic, that is Pungi. It is a wind instrument that was used long time back. It had a very shrill, unpleasant sound. That means it gave a very bad tuning. So Emperor Aurangzeb, who was the last Mughal ruler, he banned the playing of Pungi in the royal residence. Or we can also say in the palaces or the royal areas where the elite group of people stayed or lived together. After the instrument was banned, a new story begins. There was a barber who belonged to a family of professional musicians and he decided that he would modify Pungi. In order to modify, he chose a pipe with hollow stem. It was hollow from within. It was long and broader than Pungi. Pungi had seven holes on the body, but the new instrument or the hollow pipe the, that the barber took had six to nine holes. And after the instrument was modified, a new name was given, that is Shehnai. After the modification, the instrument was newly named as Shehnai. So, Sheh coming from the word Shah and Nai coming from the word Barber. Now, what does Sheh and Barber here mean? How are they related to the instrument? Sheh would be because it was first played in a Shah's chamber. Shah's chamber means a king's palace. So, that's why king means Shah and Shah would be termed as Sheh. And since the instrument was first modified by a barber, so that's why <clears throat> it would be nine. Now, the instrument gave a very soft and melodious sound. Everyone were very impressed when it was played for the first time. And its sound was later considered as auspicious. Do you remember? Pungi was considered as an unpleasant instrument because it gave a very shrill sound. But this modified instrument was considered as auspicious because of its very beautiful tuning. The tuning of the new instrument was so beautiful or was so melodious to hear that it began to be played in temples. Not only in temples, it was also started to be played in North Indian wedding ceremonies. Earlier, it was a part of the Norbert. That means nine instruments found at royal courts. That means long time back, nine instruments were played in the royal courts and Shehnai was one instrument among the nine. So later, because of its very melodious sound, it was later played in some other places as well, like temples, North Indian wedding ceremonies. And also it was brought to the classical world by Ustad Bismillah Khan. Now, who was Ustad Bismillah Khan? He was a person who introduced Shehnai to the classical world, as said earlier. He was born on 21st March 1918 in a small village called Dumran, located in the Baksar district of Bihar. He was also known by another name, that is Khan Saab, and he belonged to a very well-known family of musicians. His paternal ancestors were also great Shehnai players. So, not only Ustad Bismillah Khan was interested in music, but his paternal ancestors, that means all the ancestors related to his father, were also great Shehnai players. His father's name was Paigambar Baks and his grandfather's name was Rasul Baks Khan. His grandfather was a Shehnai Nawaz of Bhojpur King's Court. That means he often cherished by playing Shehnai in Bhojpur King's Court. Khan Saab, when he was three years old. So, his interest had grown long time back when he was only a small kid. He took to music early in life. When he was taken to Banaras, now Varanasi, he was fascinated to hear his uncle Ali Bakhs practice Chennai. So, all the way long when he was only a small kid, he was fascinated to hear his uncle play the Chennai. His uncle's name was Ali Bucks. So, he used to follow his uncle wherever he went. 
He used to accompany him and he used to concentrate the way his uncle used to play. He also went to the Vishnu temple of Benares and in this way, slowly and gradually, he got the lessons and used to sit practicing throughout the day. Bismillah Khan was five years old when he played Gili Danda near a pond in the ancient estate of Dumran. So there is a game called Gili Danda. It was played long time back, but these days it is less played. So he liked playing the game near a pond along with his friends in the ancient estate of Dumran in the very village where he was born. He went regularly to the Bihariji temple, which was nearby, to sing Bhojpuri Chaita. So not only playing games, but he also liked going to the temples and also singing Bhojpuri Chaita. It is a type of devotional song. And he used to earn a big laddu of 1.25 kg, which is a price given by local Maharaja. So being impressed by his tuning of the song or the way he sang very smoothly, he was often gifted with a big laddu of 1.25 kg by a local Maharaja. Where did Khansa practice the most? He often practiced in solitude in the temple of Balaji and Mangalamaya. So he liked practicing in solitude when he was all alone in a peaceful state of mind. So at that point, he would like to concentrate in his work and he basically practiced in the temple of Balaji and Mangalamaya. Apart from that, he also liked to practice amidst nature, that is, on the banks of the river Ganga. And these are the places which became his favorite place of practice. Why did Bismillah Khan often practice amidst nature? He often felt that whenever he was near the banks of the river Ganga, he was inspired to improvise himself. He was very much motivated when he was at that peace of mind. He loved the concentration that he used to have whenever everything was silent, when there was calmness all around. In this way, he invented many ragas. Now, here raga means the various pattern of melody and rhythm that form the basis, basis of music. So, in this way, he invented many ragas, many various patterns, the rhythms that can, could be played using a shanai. And it was said that the ragas were beyond the range of the shanai. When Bismillah Khan was 14 years old, he accompanied his uncle to Allahabad Music Conference. This was the very uncle that we have read earlier. His name was Ali Baks. So, since Bismillah Khan was 3 years old, he constantly accompanied his uncle from place to place. And at this stage of life, he even accompanied his uncle to the Allahabad Music Conference. It was a, such a big thing for a young age boy to reach the musical conference. And it was there where he received much appreciation from Ustad Fayaz Khan, who was a vocalist of the North Indian music. So, being impressed by Bismillah Khan's music, Ustad Fayaz Khan patted his back at the end of his recital and he said, work hard and you shall make it. So it was a very valuable sentence or it was an inspirational sentence for Bismillah Khan to receive the appreciation from Ustad Fayaz Khan. After much practice, Khansa became a very well-known personality both in India and also abroad. So let's see his progress in India. Khansa's big break came at the age of 22 with the opening of All India Radio in Lucknow in 1938. So, it was a big hit for him or it was a very big moment for him just at the age of 22 when he did much progress in the All India Radio Center. Radio was first of all introduced in 1930 and in Lucknow it was in 1938 that Khan Sahib joined and he became a very well known Chennai player. In this way, he was the most often heard Chennai player on radio and he was also the first Indian to greet the nation with his Chennai on 15 August 1947. So he was the one to welcome with his 
new instrument to an independent India on 15 August 1947. He poured his heart out into Rag Kafi from Red Fort to an audience including Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, where Nehru gave his famous Triest with Destiny speech. So it was on that very day when Bismillah Khan poured his heart. He devoted his song. The way he played the Shehnai was majestic. It was said that he poured his heart to play the rock coffee from the Red Fort to an audience where everyone was listening to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. He became the first Prime Minister on that day and he gave the famous Triest with Destiny speech. Even the film director Vijay Bhatt named a film after the instrument that is Chennai and called it Gunch Uti Chennai. After being impressed, hearing him play at a festival and the film was hit. So, the way Bismillah Khan played the Chennai, everyone used to be amazed by the way he played. And even a director named Vijay Bhatt, he named the film as Gunch Uti Chennai just because he was impressed by the way it was played. Since it was once when he heard Bismillah Khan playing the instrument at a festival. And do you imagine, can you imagine what had happened later? The film was a hit. One of Khan's compositions, Dil Ka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya, it became a nationwide chart poster. So, Khansav's composition, that means he was the one who patterned the music or the tuning of the Shehnai. Or we can also say the rhythm of the music was given by Bismillah Khan. And this song was a chart buster. It was a hit song of that time. It was Dilka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya. He also worked in Vikram Srinivas, that is, he is a producer, a Kannada Venture, that is, Project called Sanadhi Apanna. That means he worked for the producer whose name was Vikram Srinivas. It was a, for a project. That means it was a Kannada venture. That means we can also say it was for a Kannada film. And the name of the film was Sanadhi Apanna. Kansab made huge progress in the celluloid. That means referring to the film world, but he didn't like because he couldn't come to terms with the artificiality and glamour of the film world. So, celluloid here means it refers to the film world and he made, Kansab made much progress. He was very much successful in this world. But he did not like this world because whatever he did was natural. It came from deep within. He did not like the artificiality that the film world liked. We will see that in the film world, there are many emotions that are not real. They produce it just for the sake of money or for just producing or just for making the project. But the emotions are not from within. So, Bismillah Khan was such a person who liked doing something naturally that came from within and not artificial. So now let's see what were the various achievements he made abroad. So let's start with Afghanistan. King Zahir Shah was so impressed by the maestro or master and gifted him priceless Persian carpets and other souvenirs. Just imagine an Indian person winning many hearts abroad. King Zahir Shah of Afghanistan was very much impressed by the masterpiece created by Bismillah Khan and he gifted him the priceless Persian carpets and many other souvenirs. So, at that time, the, price, uh, the Persian carpets were the most famous things and other souvenirs as well that he gifted them to Bismillah Khan so that he can remember all the events that had happened and it was a prestigious object also we can see. See the step-by-step -step progress he made abroad. First Afghanistan, now United States. So, Khansab was the first person to be invited to perform at Lincoln Center Hall in USA. So, an Indian person was invited to United States to perform there. Wow, it was a very proud moment for all the Indians. So, he was asked to perform at the Lincoln Center Hall for the Afri Americans. In Canada, he took part in the World Exposition in Montreal. Montreal is a small place which is located in Canada. 
so he got the chance to perform in the world exposition center we can also say a place or a time when different parts of the country they used to go for the international exhibition or we can also say it was the world fair that is held in france he took part in the cannes art festival in japan he took part in osaka trade fair in iran in tehran an auditorium was named after him tahar mosik ustad bismillah khan so this was a very great thing in iran an auditorium was named after an indian and the name of the auditorium was tahar mosik ustad bismillah khan yes it was really a proud moment for all the indians at the moment the various awards he won include the padma shri the padma bhushan the padma vibhushan the bharat ratna which is the highest civilian award that he was won by him in 2001 after much achievements what is the message that he has for all the indians all i would like to say is teach your children music this is hindustan's richest tradition even the west is now coming to learn our music where he is wanting to advise all the parents of india to teach their children music because this is hindustan's richest tradition we all know that india is very famous in the world because of its vivid art and culture rich heritage and many others so music is one art form that is the richest tradition so bismillah khan wanted all the children to learn music because it is the it is one of the richest tradition and even the west is coming to learn our music just imagine the people of the west the foreign countries they are coming to india so that they can learn the pattern the rhythm that the indians have when they play music or when they play the instruments so he wanted the indians themselves to be very much perfect and very much good in this field Benares and Dumran were the most wonderful towns of the world according to Khansa. So yes, Dumran would be the most wonderful place for him because he was born in that very village and everyone being born in a particular place is a favorite for him or for her because we love the smell of the soil. Though we are apart from that place or we go out for studies to other places, but when we come to that place our emotions are related to that place we are bounded to that place because of our childhood memories that are related to that area and again benares was his favorite and the most wonderful town for him because this was the very place where he often followed his uncle ali bugs and he practiced from time to time near the banks of the river so these are the two places which he loved the most Bismillah Khan had obtained many offers but this was for the first time that he denied the offer It was once when he was offered to head a Shanghai school in USA by one of his student who wanted him to The student promised that he would create the atmosphere of Benares by replicating the temples out there So why did Bismillah Khan deny the offer It was because one of the student of USA wanted Bismillah Khan to head a Shanghai school he wanted him to be the leader of a Shanghai school where he would be able to teach many americans out there how to play the shanghai how to play the rhythm very smoothly he also promised that he would create the atmosphere of benares because benares was bismillah khan's favorite place the students say that he would try to create the atmosphere of benares in that very place in usa which was impossible what was bismillah khan's reply to the question asked khan sahab asked if the river ganga would be transported to usa he asked the student if the atmosphere is created like benares would he be able to transport the river ganga where he had the peace of mind where he was in tranquility whenever he went and practiced out there in solitude and then he said that is why whenever i am in a foreign country i keep yearning to see hindustan while in mumbai i think of only banaras and the holy ganga
and while in Banaras, I miss the unique mother of Dumraun. So he wanted to say that how homesick he was whenever he went to a foreign country. Whenever he was outside or whenever he was abroad, he kept yearning to come back to Hindustan. Again, whenever he came to Hindustan and he is in Mumbai, he used to be homesick for Benares and the Holy Ganga. He wanted to go to Benares and Holy Ganga whenever he was in Hindustan. And again, whenever he was in Benares, he really missed the unique matter of Dimraun, the place where he was born. So here's a shortcut for you all to remember. Foreign country, he used to yearn for Hindustan. Whenever he is in Hindustan, that is in Mumbai, he wants to go to Benares and Holy Ganga. Again, when he, he is in Benares, he m really missed his Dumraun, the very village where he was born. In an interview by Shekhar Gupta, he asked if Bismillah Khan didn't think of moving to Pakistan. So, what was the reply given by Bismillah Khan after that? Mark the answer that he gave to Shekhar Gupta. He prayed to God to forbid him or to disallow him leave Benares. So how much love he had for Benares that he did not want to go to Pakistan. He once crossed the border and even went to Pakistan to say that he had been there and stayed for an hour. So if people ask whether he had been to Pakistan or not, he did the formality. He went to Pakistan, he stayed there for an hour and he was able to later say that yes, I have been to Pakistan, but I don't like that place. I really like Benares the most. And out there, what did he do? He said Namaskar to the Pakistanis and Salam Alaikum, Salam Alaikum to the Indians. This was his broad mindedness. Here comes the end of the person who won many hearts. He passed away on 21st August 2006 when he was 90 years. He had prolonged illness, was given state funeral, and the government of India declared one day of national mourning. National mourning days are held to pay tribute to the person who had done much for India. It is a type of symbolic gesture that is paid to the person who died for India, who had done many things for India. He was a jewel from India that won many hearts from abroad, for which the government of India had declared one day of National Morning Day. So here comes the end of the chapter where we have learned how the Shehnai was modified from a Pungi, how Shehnai was brought to the classical world by the famous personality Bismillah Khan, and we have learned the biography of this famous person.